this power against humanity. Why? I assume from the point there is only one civilization and why do we speak about multiplicity of cultures and multiplicity of civilizations? How can we speak in this context? The fact is that in abstract form there is one civilization but different countries, different people are in different conditions of appropriating this civilization. The differences are only in vertical and cultures are on the horizontal line. And that makes a difference. Cultures of different nations, they're equal each in its own right and it, its own specifics. Mm. But we can say that these civilizations are above the others. No, we can't say this. Can it be that I contradict myself saying that there is only one civilization and now I say there are several? Another one, another. Terminology is very conventional. If we see one country due to some circumstances, conditions, had achievements, they can be at the guidance, at the steering wheels of civilizations. Other cultures formally represent another culture, another civilization, but in fact it is the same civilization, but with different degree of maturity. And the dialogue between different cultures can be done. But when the civilization of top maturity should know that this is not the merit of theirs, this is the merit of all humanity. Not to take more time of yours, I will read some extracts from my wonderful presentation. What civilizations are envisage when we speak about dialogue of civilization. It is important to find out Eastern or Islamic and Western Christian civilization. We do not agree to dividing principle of religious for civilizations. This is wrong. Paradoxically, here people speak about it Western civilization is related to Christianity and there is another one, Islamic civilization, and there is a third one, Buddhist civilization. These civilizations are outside the religion. What makes the West be the West? What is the specifics of the West? It's very clear. The religion of the West is science and not Christianity and not Islam. Only science could give unison to countries and make them become mature. Application of science, industrialization brought some countries to the forefront of civilization. Some time ago, Christianity was against science. You remember Inquisition. But when religion and civilization were separated, then science started to develop.
Arnold Toynbee considers history as the change of civilizations, dividing them on national, ethnic, religious principle. Toynbee speaks about the incept development and decline of civilizations. Progress of humanity is seen as a dynamic combination of local processes of development. But how these local processes mutually complement each other? That's the problem. Because we consider that there is only one way for human progress and development, and that is the unified civilization. By summing local cultures, we have a very important philosophical problem that lacks research. There are frequently seen research of opposing local civilizations and accentuating the attention on differences rather than similarities. And then they speak about the clash of civilizations. Toynbee and Huntington connect civilizations to religions. Clash of civilizations is explained on the differences between religions. I do not agree. In modern times, the processes develop in another way, forming a unified civilization. And frequently you see consciousness or unconscious mixture of the notion of Western civilization and unified civilization. There is one Western, ostensibly, and the rest of the world. This is how Huntington makes a division, West and non-West, in spite of the fact that in the structure of modern civilization, there are achievements of all preceding cultures. Turnby is against reducing civilizations only to Western civilization. He advanced the concept of multiplicity of civilizations that existed and disappeared in certain periods of time. Hence, Turnby is against the notion of unified civilization. But criticizing this notion, he is criticizing the idea of contemporary modern civilization as the only one. He writes this thesis about unionism of civilization is a false concept that in modern Western historians brought the impact of their social imagination that deludes the audience thinking that Western civilization has brought the chain of economic system of theirs to the whole world. He thinks civilization is ignoring other differences and advancing the more mature civilization. His position is clear. Arguments are logical. But why we do insist on the notion of united civilization? Yes, we can talk about multiplicity of civilizations that might be called historical or local civilizations because they emerge in certain regions and develop and then get on this and other reasons to decay and they disappear from the map of humanity. Tranby himself describes the historical process of emergence and disappearance of civilizations, but he is deluded by the fact that he, in his period, had several cultures, several civilizations at a time, and one of them pretended at the status of the unified. By calling it Western civilization, to which he totally belonged, he doesn't want to be partial and he returns the right of alternative civilizations to autonomous life. My, my view is the United Civilization has summed up the achievements of different local cultures, and at modern period this function is being done by Western civilization. 
in a word, an important advanced civilization. that take the achievement of others and appropriated it the way the Western civilization has done it is now on the forefront of development. Fernand Brodel spoke about this phenomena. He, spoke, he specified united civilization and local civilizations, by general, opposing general, and specific. Technical innovations are exported throughout the world and are immediately entrenched in different cultures and they establish the unified image of the world. Railroads, railway stations, loudspeakers, large cities, steel and metal, skyscrapers, where population lives. Technology unites the world. That is what Ramon Aron has been writing, and as the new stage of unified civilization spreads its influence over the world. It seems important to specify the basic components or the wings of East and West civilization as one whole. First of all, let's note that East and West, these notions, were first used geographically. We use them not in this meaning. We always mean other notions of civilizations. East as a symbol of traditionality, West as a symbol of modernity. From this viewpoint, specificity of science, education and culture is a temporal rather than spatial dimension. Such approach, Orient, does not exist. It existed until 16th century. That's the classical Orient. And it is left only in literature and in history. But then came the West, what we call Western civilization, Occident. In the middle of the 20th century, Occidental world also implemented its mission, and today it does not exist as well. Humanity went to the new stage, neither West nor East, but we don't know how to call this new condition of the civilization that is different from the classical Orient and from the classical Occident. In the post-industrial period, in the epoch of uh, consumerism, the civilization should be considered in a new viewpoint. These are my considerations. I think that might be useful to share my views with you. And summing up, I would like to say where we are now and to thank Rhodos, analysis of global civilization as a implementation of humanity envisages a new turn in the search for meaning of life and it raises philosophical problems in the course of history of humanity spiritual, cultural and material technical systems individual spiritual sentiments and public processes, simple human happiness and planetary citizenship and responsibility finally function as a united whole. The period of infancy of humanity, the period of a man lost in rational world is 
now acquiring new meaning in its connection with macro and this process stems not anywhere outside but in the same Greek civilizations here on the roads. Thank you.